Hello, this is Barbara Nicolato, Nick Snacks for Del Bello's Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to make this candle, which I call Christmas Light for Christmas Night. As winter and the holidays are approaching, a candle can add so much ambiance to a room or make a wonderful gift. And why stop at Christmas? Make other themes and designs for any occasion. Once you know how to do it, the possibilities are endless. At the end of um, this YouTube video, you'll see a complete list of materials to make the candle. I've also included links for each of the items. To make my forest scene, I'm using mainly these three Lavinia stamps, starting with uh, the fairy fir tree, and I'm also using the red pine, which is the small version, and the small version of the fairy fir. Then I'm going to stamp um, Santa and his reindeer, which is called Christmas Night. The inks I'm using is Morning Mist, which is a gray color, and Nocturne, which is our black. I'm going to also be using the Distress Oxide ink called Faded Jeans by Ranger as well as pan pastels. I have pearlescent yellow and titanium white. This Nellie's Choice snow effect gives a beautiful 3D effect. Not only is it great for snow, but you could use it as ripples on waves um, or snow on treetops and things like that. The candle's a six inch I'm also using a six by six piece of tissue paper. I've torn an eight inch piece off the wax paper roll. I'll be using that later. And to blend the pastels, the inks and stuff, I'm using the blending brush by Nellie's Choice. It's a number four, about one inch. Um, this brush sticks I like. It's got the uh, paintbrush tip, but a smoothie would work also. These are soft applicators and they have replaceable heads. My pencil, the Stabilo in black, is my go-to for when I'm needing to fill in some ink. The Jelly Roll in clear, and then I have the Uniball 1.0 millimeter in white. I've made some masks out of torn printer paper, and I've also cut a one and three eighth inch mask with a die. What is really cool though is Del Bellos has circles galore, and this is great for making moons, suns, orbs. They are 15 circles. You could use the cutout circles as well as the full page for masking. And this is on my wish list. It's going to be the next thing that I purchase for sure. So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to take the one and three eighths inch circle and use it as a mask. And then I'm taking in the faded jeans ink and carefully applying it around the mask. I put a white sheet under there so that you could see better how it takes the color. And as you can see, tissue paper is not taking it as smoothly as multifarious paper would be taking that color. I am going slow, even though I speeded this up, and I'm trying to be careful so as to not tear the paper. Actually, I've torn two of them already and had to start again. Now I'm going to bring in some my masks and I'm going to work at the bottom of the mask and apply a little bit of ink and just try to make a couple little hills, land formations, so that I could start um, putting the forest trees in.
point, I'm coming in with the pan pastels. I'm using the titanium white first through the mask. And that's going to give a pearly glow to the moon, which really you can't see on the video. And then I'm going to use some yellow around the outer edge of the moon to just give it that glow. I'm not putting my colors on too dark because when the candle is lit, I want it to have a very soft effect. Now I'm taking out the VersaFine Claire Morning Mist ink, and I'm going to be using the Red Pine Small Tree. As I ink up the various trees, I don't do the entire size of the tree. I mean, sometimes I do, but at other point points, I want them to appear in the background. So I want them to be um, not as tall as the ones in the foreground. So I end up masking the bottom part or maybe not even inking up all the long trunk. Make sure you're working on a craft mat or that you have a paper or something underneath the tissue paper because the VersaFine Clear inks actually bleed through the t very fine tissue paper and you wouldn't want to stain something that you care about. Now we're going to bring in the Lavinia 094 Fairy Fir Tree 1. I love this stamp because it's so versatile. You can start inking it from the top, and no matter how far down the tree you go, it always looks like a beautiful tree. So you can make little Christmas trees, medium-sized Christmas trees, taller Christmas trees, and in the forest scene, you can do a lot of um, you can do a lot of perspective with it using the full tree for up front and smaller trees as you go through um, down through the background. Look at that. They're just all different sizes, all from one stamp. So now I'm going to continue with my morning mist ink, and I'm going to stamp various. Uh, trees here and there until I fill in my forest, making sure I leave enough room in the front for Santa and the reindeer. Also, be very careful when you take the stamp off the tissue paper that you don't rip it. That's actually looking pretty good right now. I think I'm going to just maybe one more stamp in the front there on the left. Yes, of course, I have a little tear in it now. 
Well, I'm not going to worry too much about it because later on when I trim down the paper, that just might take care of itself. Putting away the morning mist ink and trading it for Nocturne, I'm going to use the stamp Christmas Night, Santa and the Reindeer, and I'm going to stamp off first because I don't want it to be too dark on the candle. And we'll place that right about there. I like to keep the Stabilo black pencil on hand because I use this to fill in areas where maybe the ink was missing, it didn't come out dark enough. Just little touch-ups here and there. Then, of course, you can use it for a little shadowing or to define the base of trees and so on. Here's the part where I'm just going to tweak the project a little bit, add a little more color to the moon, um, maybe a little more blue to the snow areas. Some white pan pastel to the snow. And like I said, I'm just tweaking it up a little bit. At this point, I'm going to let the project dry for about 15-20 minutes and then come back and finish it off. In looking at this artwork that I want to fix to the candle, I'm going to have to trim it. And I don't want blunt edges because when I want it to blend in with the candle. And so I want them feathered at the edges. So a good way to do this, an easy way to do this, is to take a brush and some water and wet just the edges of the tissue paper. Where it's wet, 
it becomes very easy to tear off and you're not tearing off more than you would want to tear off. So I'm carefully going all around, wetting a little of the edges and tearing as I go. In the back of my mind, I still have that problem. What am I going to do about that tear in the tissue paper? I'm thinking of just waxing it on, but then when I measure it to the candle, I soon discover that, hey, it fits great. If I tear the whole thing off, you wouldn't even know. So that's what I decide to do and problem solved. Now it's time to attach the design to the candle. So I take that eight inch piece of wax paper. What you see me doing here is I'm scratching both sides to see if one side is waxed and perhaps the other one isn't, but both sides had a little wax come off on my fingernail. So it doesn't matter which side I'm using. And what I do is I take the wax paper and pull it tightly around my design, making sure that there are no creases or wrinkles. And I'm actually holding it by pinching together the wax paper in the back. I use a heat tool, make sure it's warm, very well hot actually. And little by little, I go over the wax paper. The heat goes through and some of that wax melts off the wax paper and some of the wax on the candle melts and it combines and makes the tissue paper stick to the candle. After a few moments, I take a peek to see how it's working and to know whether it needs a little more heat or if I'm done. At the end of my materials list, I make note that some of these flicker candles, battery operated, that you buy don't have a wax coating on them. They're simply plastic. And those should not be used for this project because when you heat them, I would think that the, wa um, excuse me, that the plastic would melt. So this needs to be affixed a little more. So I apply a little more heat. If I see any wrinkles forming, I pat them down. This is going along quite well though. And now here comes the reveal. Ooh, that stuck on there quite well. See, by feathering the tissue paper, there are no blunt edges and everything blends in really well with the candle. Well, let's see what this looks like when I turn it on. Oh, not bad. How about with the lights off? Ah, there's that nice glow. And there's no reason to stop here. You could make candles for your home or office, for other holidays, for birthdays, Mother's Days. They make great teacher gifts. As with creativity, remember, the more you use, the more you have. I hope you've enjoyed crafting with me, and if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Hope to see you at DelBellowsDesigns.com for most of your crafting needs.